Hi, I'm Fabio Varesano from varesano.net. In this video I show you how to etch an Arduino shield from a copper clad board. I'm gonna use the press and peel sheets, which are these blue, blue sheets here, from where on which I printed using a laser printer and you can see that this is the design I'm gonna etch on my copper clad board. My copper, copper, copper clad board is this one, this is a backlight copper clad board which, which only has one copper covered side which uh, you also can find this kind of board in uh, double copper um, side but I'm gonna use a single side one because my design is uh, pretty simple this time okay so I'm using uh, okay so the first thing we're gonna do is uh, using sanded, uh, sanded stuff like this one into the copper clad board to remove oxidations and the idea is that you have to remove all the oxidation and you will have to, to see that there are very tiny screws like very tiny scratches like this so that the design will be will be uh, pasted better on the on the copper clapboard. Okay. And you can see that there are like very tiny scratches on the surface so that the design will be better will be better attached on the copper clad board so the next thing I'm gonna do is using a soft paper like this one to clean out the copper clad board I can also use some alcohol to improve the, the cleaning process and here I have the alcohol, this is a very normal alcohol used for cleaning your house I'm using just a bit and I'm using it to clean out the radices of copper from the copper clad board so that it's very very clean now and remember to not leave any drop of alcohol on the board and leave it very okay so this is the board yeah i think it's looking pretty good and close this one okay so the next thing i'm gonna do is prepare prepare my design gear for the copper clad board as you can see I printed only a very small piece of the of the blue um, of the blue sheet because in this way I can save more uh, press and peel sheets which is very expensive so as you can see I placed some uh, transparent tape and I just used a normal A4 sheet like this one and of and before I was using the regular um, sheet to test where the design will be printed okay so I'm removing everything 
and that's it ready for for transferring I do have here an, uh, a very simple iron which is a very old model from my grandparent I think and this is not re re really anything complex at all it's just a regular soldering iron uh, a regular cl clean clothing iron but that's it so okay the next thing I'm gonna do is placing the my design on the copper clad board I'll try to place it on one side so that I, I will later on have to cut uh, a smaller side of the board but let's try I'm using I'm using this to protect the design from excessive heating and basically what, I'm, what I'll do is placing this one above my sheet like this I will check that it's correctly aligned Now I can press a little bit more. And now I can check if the design has been transferred. I can use my tweezers because it's very hot. Uh, Give it a try. That's it. Okay, so let's inspect the results. We have uh, some, as you can see here, this is not very well transferred, but that's not a problem. And while the traces are pretty good, I think. Ah, you can see here there's a bug here another one here but I can simply use a permanent maker like this one to fix the various errors on the borsa for example here here
and this is the fixed version I used my my permanent maker here and I fixed all the traces that, that were badly transferred and all the planes that were badly transferred to so basically now the design it should be should work just fine okay so the next part of the process consists in using a, a Dremel like this one which I have connected a flexible stuff like this one which has a, a cutter here as you can see so what I'm gonna do now is using the Dremel to cut out the unused part of the copper clad board. Or you can also use a regular cutter or anything you wish. So, um, let's go. Ah, of course, I need to use glasses, protective glasses like this one, and uh, briefing protection like this one uh, because that there will be backlight powders or FR4 powders which is very very bad to brief so it's very better to use something like this and let's start Okay, that's it. I don't bother to uh, cleaning everything now. Just remove the residues of of powder of everything with some cleaning tool like this. But the sides, we we I will uh, fix them later in the process. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is placing my copper clad board inside this uh, ferric chloride etchant bath, which is uh, covered in a plastic bag, plastic uh, recipient like this one, which is transparent so that I can check the status of the process. And that's it, I'm doing this uh, outside. I'm using ice protection gloves, rubber gloves like this one and as well later I also use breathing protection. So that's it because the uh, action is a very strong uh, um, is a very strong uh, solution which can be harmful is, if you don't take the adequate protections. Okay, so I can use these plastic tweezers only because anything which is metallic would be etched by the etchant. But so just use uh, tweezers like this one, which are plastic tweezers. I take the board and I slowly place it inside the etchant. And I'm sure to cover it with enough etchant. And that's it. I will uh, keep keep the board inside the hatchant for about uh, 20 to 30 minutes depending of the 
of uh, about how strong the etchant is. Of course, if the, the etchant is new, it will take less time, but uh, if the etchant is it's old, it will take more time. And uh, also, temperature will uh, ease the eating the each etching pro process. So higher temperature will uh, will make the etching faster, and also movements will help the etching process. I cover the board with uh, this uh, with the case so that everything is uh, hermetically closed. There are no vapors coming out from the etchant, and I can do something like this to help increasing the action effi efficiency so that's it okay so this is the result after about uh, 30 minutes of etching you can see that all the copper has gone what you see here is are just powder residues which will get away on rinsed underwater. So this is it. Okay we can now rinse the board underwater. Looking pretty good. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, removing the ink, the toner from the copper clad board from our PCB using uh, this which is uh, nitro solvent I don't know how this is called in in English but this is a very common uh, very common solution which you can find in uh, do-it-yourself stores and stuff like that be careful because it's uh, it's uh, it's a da it's dangerous stuff you you have to do to use glasses, um, briefing protection, as of, of course gloves like this one. So what I'm gonna do is using a little bit of, of it like this, and then I'm using this toothbrush to clean out the PCB and you can see how this this is works That's it. You can see that now the PCB it's perfectly perfectly clean. Okay, now we can uh, raise the board underwater like this. the board is perfectly clean okay so the next part of the project consists in using the this which is uh, which is uh, the immersed tin powder basically it's um, a thinning solution be careful because this product is also 
harmful and you have to use gloves, eyes protection and brief, brief protection because the, it's a very strong solution too. Uh, the idea is to use this solution on the, on the PCB and this saves uh, the copper from oxidation and from uh, so it's it's better because um, it will save from uh, time and etc but uh, this uh, this step is uh, actually not required but it's better to uh, higher the life of the PCB so I'm gonna use this thin solution a little bit just to cover the PCB and I leave this inside you can see that it's already thinning this is a very cool this is a very cool stuff you can see look how cool this is This is getting all the copper is being covered by thinning, and this is very very cool. Ready? Ready? We can just remove it from the thinning solution, and then we will rinse it under water. And I I wanna save the use of the thinning solution, so. I'm gonna put everything inside this. And that's it. Okay, so this is our PCB after the thinning uh, procedure and you can see that the result is pretty good. Now what I'm gonna do is uh, using these drill bits here to drill all the pin header holes and that's it. I drilled all the bit, all the holes for the various um, connectors. I'm gonna use this kind of headers here, like the one used on the Arduino, and we're gonna need two headers like this uh, with eight pin, and two like this one 
with six pins. So basically this is the bottom of the shield so this is coming like this and this one will it's over it's there this one it's here this one This one it's here and then this other one. So we have an Arduino shield. We still have to solder the various connectors, which I'm gonna do just right now. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm gonna use uh, lot of flux because uh, usually soldering on these uh, handmade boards it's uh, quite difficult with, without um, uh, without using flux I'm gonna use my uh, solder here which is uh, lead free I don't and ROS compilant I don't like to use um, leaded stuff on my work because it's not good for uh, for the environment for example and let's start from the these little little connectors here and you can start by using putting a lot of flux on the sides on the pads And let's check it out. The joints look pretty good. Now we can do the other side. Again lot of flux the side of the PCB again I'm using a lot of flux that's it take my soldering iron
That's it. Now let's <coughs> let's inspect the joint. Quite good, I think. Okay, now that we have soldered all the headers of the shield, we can try try it on the Arduino and see if it goes inside that's it awesome now what I need to do is to solder all the various headers on this uh, shield and we are almost done and this is my final result you can see that I con I assembled all the connectors. I added these uh, wires to implement the top le the um, front layer of the PCB, which here I don't have, but I just use these tiny wires here. I added all the various connectors, and now this is uh, ready to be used. I also have here. A 9 volt battery connector and a, a switch here. So that's it. The shield connects connects just fine to the to the Ar Arduino. But uh, you always have to be careful because uh, the USB connector can. Um, can uh, conduce uh, electricity. So, for example, here I do have uh, some uh, pins coming out from the shield, which may short get shorted on the on the shield here. So be careful for that. I'm now using here a uh, plastic tape, which should save from the trouble of shorting those pins. So that's it. Thanks for watching and good